Greetings and salutations, everyone. Today we return to Eden Eternal, an MMORPG we've been thoroughly enjoying and we've been playing off and on since September of 2018. Eden Eternal Vendetta, that is. Not the official version. That's from GameyGo and I wouldn't touch that with a meter long stick. Let alone a two meter stick. Heck, I just wouldn't touch it. Ugh. So guys, if you would like to play Eden Eternal, the version that's actually fun to play, then you can by simply following the link in the description and or pinned comment depending on how lazy I am. <laughs> Ahem. Anyway, now if you've watched our previous parts, you would have known that we covered a lot of the key features in those parts. Except for one major and crucial feature of the game. Something that makes Eden Eternal great. And that is the class system. And that is what we will be tackling this time around. My class, of course, being a super amazing elite warrior that totally never dies. And I can become a Templar, a holy warrior of justice. Unless you're referring to the Templars in the Assassin's Creed games, in which case, not, not so justice serving. <laughs> or the Templars that, you know, were in real history. They also were kind of, you know, not so good. Okay, maybe Templars aren't the best of classes, or people for that matter, but anyway, to become one of these advanced classes, or any other class besides the basic ones that you had access to at the beginning, you will need to level up the required classes. For me, as a warrior wanting to become a Templar, I needed to level up a knight and a priest. I clearly chose the wrong class to start off as. I should have decided to become a samurai. At least that had the warrior requisite. <sighs> and who thought being a magic person when you're exclusively using a melee weapon, dual lancers for that matter, was a good idea? I mean, I can't just go back to using a stick. No offense, sticks. Have you ever seen a holy cleric running into the front lines healing people with two giant lances? Well guys, now you have. You can cross that off of your bucket list. I mean, can this even be classified as healing? I reach in for seven. Seven HP points. I'd be better off healing an ant for this minuscule and pointless healing. <sighs> At least I can still melee the monsters and that's still relatively good. I guess I'll just be a battle cleric of the melee variety. At least leveling the knight was easy. Anyway, if you're wondering what Styx was leveling up, Styx was, if you didn't know, a magician by default, or better known as the AoE King, literally obliterating everything in his path, or my path for that matter. Of course, I did help by taking the aggression off of him, most of the time. The times I didn't often incurred both of our deaths, of course. That being said, he decided to try out both the illusionist and the luminary, both being Pretty damn awesome if I'm being completely honest. They have flashy skills, powerful damage, and then there was me. Meleeing. Just meleeing away all the monsters, because I couldn't actually use my skills. But hey, at least I looked good while doing it. That's one thing. Now, some of you guys may think leveling up two extra classes is quite difficult. Well, in Eden Eternal Vendetta, that just isn't the case. Whilst the new classes may start at level one, your actual character level doesn't change. So it was easy to continue questing and dungeoning in the same level range that we were currently in, despite the fact our actual class level was so low. And doing this actually made us level up extremely fast. So this is very different to how a lot of games handle the multiple class system. Look at Final Fantasy XIV, for instance. If you decide to change classes, you start at level one and you have to do level one content and work your way up. In this, that's not the case. So what took us countless hours of progressing, leveling, Dungeoning takes, you know, less hours of dun dungeoning and qu questing and pr progressing. You know, getting to level 45 is still pretty high and still pretty difficult, but in comparison to a lot of other games that I've played, it's far easier and far more enjoyable. It made leveling up some classes seem tolerable. I mean, you know, <clears throat> upgrading one's gears and weapon helps the process along a little bit, but you know, doesn't it always? However, despite the weapons, despite the armor, the progression, the skills that you have gained through the levels, nothing can save you from the oblivion that awaits all of us. 
The monsters in this game are incredibly punishing. Incredibly. I don't think I was ever fully at 100% HP whenever I was leveling up. It's goddamn difficult. Especially now, since we have lost our one and only trusty healer, Mrs. Styx. Without her, we're left to fight a hordes and hordes of adorable creatures and cretins that just want our blood. Do you know what that feels like? It feels like you can't stand anywhere, not even in a town, without getting attacked by these cretins. I mean, I guess I could have healed, but I mean, like, we clearly saw how effective that was. It was amazing. You know, healing 7 HP is just like, whew, it's just so high. So, after struggling through, Leveling up our subclasses, we are one step closer to becoming an advanced class. Something that towers above the rest. A proverbial god, as it were. There were only ten more levels left before we could swap, and it won't take us long to get those ten levels. So guys, will we make it? Will Styx and I manage to continue through this difficult yet addictively fun anime MMORPG without Mrs. Styx? Can we unlock the advanced classes? Will we ever stop dying? I guess we'll see that in the next journey back into the world of Eden Eternal Vendetta. But till then guys, I hope that you have a good day, night or afternoon, wherever it is where you are, and we'll be seeing you guys next time.